This is the new Toyota Igo Cross. And it's a little bit like the Skoda Octavio because a lot of people are going to call it by the wrong name. You see, Toyota also does the Yaris Cross. And on the back of that car, they spell out the word Cross. Whereas on this, they have the letter X. So a lot of people call it the Toyota Igo X. And it's a bit like the Skoda Octavia, which is the wrong name because it's an Octave. So it should be Skoda Octavia. Listen out in this video because I'm sure I'll probably call this car by the wrong name. And what I want you to do is actually note down the time code of whenever I make a mistake. I'll be looking out for your comments. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna talk you around the exterior, the interior, see how practical the car is, take it for a drive and launch it to see how quick it isn't to 60 miles an hour. Because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. And if you haven't done so already and you like these kind of review videos, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss a single upload. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start this video by talking about the design of the new Igo Cross. The rear sort of has a face to it, which is odd for the back of a car, but I can see eyes, I can see a nose, and I can see a big smiley mouth with some big canine teeth as well. You might be wondering what the heck I've been ingesting over Christmas that I can see these things, but I can see them. Okay, let's move on. Anyway, down the side. So, alloy wheels are pretty blooming big. Look at them. These are 18s. They're optional. And they get these like red accents on them. Standard, you get 17-inch wheels. Now, all but the entry-level car get this two-tone paint design. Entry-level cars are just available in three colours. Silver, white, and black. Now, this car, you might be thinking, it's quite a bit bigger than the old Igo, and you're right. So, it's about that much taller than the previous generation car, and they've given it some, like, body cladding that you'd expect on SUVs, but don't go thinking this is an off-roader. It's just for show. It's also about that much longer than the old Igo, and it's about that much wider as well. So, it should be bigger inside, but we'll find out about that in a moment. And here at the front... It's got the same face, pretty much, as the Yaris Cross. It's got a face at the front and a face at the back. This car's two-faced, which means I don't trust it, but you can trust Carway to get you a fair price on your next car. So the Igo Cross, it starts from just under 16,000 pounds, but you can save an average of just under 600 pounds on one. Now, if you want to go to CarWow to check out the savings on current cars, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. Alternatively, if you're under that at a later date, you can just simply Google help me CarWow and we'll not only help you find a good deal on the car you're buying, you can sell your current car through CarWow as well, just by uploading some photos, giving a brief description. Then our dealers from across the country will bid on your car. You pick the best price, they'll come to your house, take the car away and put the money in your account. It's dead easy. So remember, help me car wow. It's easy. Here on the inside, the Igo Cross does feel like the entry level car for the Toyota range because there's lots of hard, cheap feeling plastics. You've got exposed metal panels, though they have tried to jazz things up. So the things that you touch, like the steering wheel and the gear knob, are covered in nice leather so they feel good also all but the inch level car get these accents around the air vents plus around the gear selector you've got red stitching on the gear selector gator and you've got some red patterning here on the seats and some kind of textured effect as well now when it comes to infotainment the inch level car gets a seven inch screen then you can step up to an eight inch screen which is what this is and then the top of the range gets a nine inch screen with inbuilt sat nav. The lower two infotainment systems don't have sat nav, but they do have a map button. When you press it, it reminds you that you couldn't afford the satellite navigation system. It doesn't really matter because all models do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So when you plug that in and then hit the map button, look at this, you have your Google Maps. Now this is wired this system, but the top of the range car with the inbuilt sat nav has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Anyhow, all but the interlevel car gets automatic climate control and it's good that it's not integrated into the touchscreen. Touchscreen itself is actually quite easy to navigate though the graphics are a little bit low def. Speaking of low def, let's move on to the instruments. You see, you've got a traditional, well, I say traditional, <laughs> the actual design of it is not traditional, but an analog speedo. Then there's a semi-digital rev counter down the side. Then you've got digitally lit fuel gauge. And then in the middle is this weird like add-on, which is like some old mobile phone that you can then cycle through different views. Once again, that will show you your speed as well as the dial above. And then you have other information such as the driver's aids, your audio and phone and all those bits and pieces. I think that's a bit clumsy. It's like they've tried to reinvent the wheel and failed. They've come up with like a square. Driving position is generally quite good. Toyota's always have a good driving position. The Japanese cars, the Japanese drive on the left like we do in the UK. And so it just seems to work nicely. What doesn't work nicely is this. Look, well, 
you have height adjustment for the steering wheel. <laughs> Obviously not damped. <laughs> Budget car. There's no reach adjustment. Look. <coughs> Sorry, that was a little bit weird. Though it's kind of made me a bit, I go cross. What also makes me cross is the fact there's no armrest. So yeah, you've got one over here. So when you're driving long distances, but this, ha, yeah, yeah. ah, then there's a storage, right? So you've got a couple of cup holders there fine for smaller bottles, but when you get taller bottles, it sort of gets in the way of the climate control. There's an area there where you can put your mobile phone. If you have the top specification card, then you've got wireless charging, and then you've got your USBs there, old fashioned USBs. Where's the USB-C? And then there's an even older fashioned 12 volt socket there. Now let's just check out the glove box. Look at that, <laughs> not damped at all. The size is all right though. Door bins, and they're a little bit narrow, so you can fit bottles this size in. But once again, when you go for bigger bottles, it's a bit more awkward. Awkward. It sort of works, but it's a bit of a squeeze. Speaking of which, is it going to be a bit of a squeeze for me in the back seats? As you can see, it is not great back here. So this seat is in my typical driving position and my knees are pressed up against the seat back. Headroom's bad as well. Look, my head is pressed up against the roof. And I'm not that tall. I'm, I'm average. I'm 179 centimetres tall. There's an okay amount of foot space, so you can slide your feet underneath the chair in front to relieve some of the pressure on your knees so they only just brush the seat backs. But do you know what? If you want a car that's small with much more space in the back, you should check out my review of the Sears Ibiza by clicking on the pop-out banner up there. I'll put the link in the description below. The starting price is a bit more than this Igo Cross. However, you can save an average of £1,600 upon through car wise. It actually means in reality it works out similar money. Plus, with the Saturday Beatha, you can carry three people in the back, whereas this is a strict two-seater. As for when it comes to fitting a child seat in the back, well, one of the other problems with this car is that the rear doors really don't open very wide at all. It's hard enough to get your body in, let alone a big bulky child seat. Once you have got it in place, though, you are going to have to move the front passenger seat forward to make room in the back because it's quite tight back here. Thankfully, the ice fix anchor points are so easy to get to that you can locate the seat dead easy once you've moved the passenger seat forward, though the person in the front is not going to be very happy about that at all. <laughs> Not the most practical back here. For instance, look, one cup holder and absolutely no door bins. I wonder if things get better in the boot. It's not great, but it's not terrible. The low capacity is 231 litres, which is all right for a car of this size. But it's about 10% less than the boot capacity of a Hyundai i10 or Kia Picanto. There's also a big load lip to lift stuff over. Ah! Oh. Ah! <laughs> yeah. It'll be fine. The space is quite square and deep, so you can load it fairly high, but there are no features in here other than a couple of hooks there where you can probably hang your shopping off. Now, if you need to carry much bigger items, you can fold down the back seats like that. Look, there we go. God, oh. Well, obviously there's a big hump in the floor, so bear with me. I seem to have damaged it. That'll teach me a lesson, won't it? I'm always chucking stuff about. I need to stop it anyway. Yeah, so if you slide things to the front, it's, it's a bit more tricky because you have to lift them over that hump. Right. Anyway, that brings me on to five annoying things about the Toyota Igo Cross. Parts of this car just sound so flimsy. Listen to this. <laughs> it's especially bad when you shut the door. Listen. <laughs> It's like it's made of the thinnest tin. To save money, Toyota hasn't bothered to fit a light to the vanity mirror. So when it's dark, you won't be able to see just how beautiful you are. It's really awkward to refill the screen wash because the filler is recessed down here. Look, I'm gonna try it with a bottle. And you see, you end up spilling even that all over the place. Imagine if you've got one of those big vats of screen wash. You're gonna need a funnel and a funnel that actually snakes all the way out up here. Bad design. There's no automatic function on the driver's window like you get on most cars. So you have to keep your finger down to make the window operate like that. Not great when you're driving, eh? Oh, it's not as bad as this though. Look at this. The windows don't even go down in the back. They're just poppy outy, like on an old mini from the 60s. The little three-cylinder engine is very rough at idle. It sends loads of vibrations into the cabin. I'll illustrate that now with this bottle of water. So I'll just start the car. Have a look at this. You can see all the ripples in the water. They're going through my bottom. On a positive side, I guess it feels like you've got massage seats. Speaking of which, that brings on to five cool things 
about the Toyota Igo X. This cheap little car has all the safety systems you can possibly get on a modern car and standard right across the range. So there's things like pre-collision warning, there's lane departure warning, lots of other things it can spot if you're falling asleep and it will warn you. Then there's the adaptive cruise control as well, which will automatically keep your safe distance from the car in front and steer to keep you in lane. All standard, lovely. I love Toyota's low cover solution. As you can see, it does the job. You wouldn't be able to see in the boot through the back window, but it's so small and light that you can just pop it in the space in the boot and then load things on top of it. It won't get crushed, it doesn't matter. It's a great idea. More manufacturers should copy this. This should be a cheap car to run. Toyota says it will return 56 miles per gallon, though it's very hard to get those manufacturer figures. Still, this one, when driven sensibly, has done 53 miles per gallon. I'll take that. This car's warranty is excellent. So you get five years, 100,000 miles as standard. But after that period, if you continue to get your car serviced at an official Toyota dealer, they will add an extra year's warranty up to a further five years, which means in theory, you get a 10 year warranty. You can get the Igo Cross with a folding fabric roof. Look at that. It's an 895 pound option that you can't get it on the entry level model, though it is standard on the top spec car. Brilliant. Look, it even comes with a man to operate it for you. Hello, man. Man in cap. <laughs> it's so cross now. I go cross. Anyway, £895 option, very unusual on this size of car. It's always great to have choice, isn't it? And that brings me on to the engine. There is only one choice available, and it's this. One litre, three cylinder, naturally aspirated, no turbo, hence only 72 feeble horsepower. Now it's front wheel drive this car, but you can get it with either a five speed manual or a CVT automatic gearbox. So bring in mind there's one engine, but there's four different trim levels and the option of that roof. What would be my ideal version of the Toyota Igo Cross? Well, I'm gonna actually configure it now using the car wire configurator. I mean, the body panels on this car are so light, I can hold this up with my head, no problem at all. Okay, so I'm gonna configure it like that. There we go. And if you wanna see what my ideal configuration is of this car and the saving through car wire, click on the pop-out banner up there. We'll put the link in the description below. Let's see what this little Igo Cross is like to drive. I'm gonna start off in town and by opening the roof. Because why not, even though it's raining a little bit. If you've got it, may as well use it, right? Okay, so this car's slightly raised driving position is supposed to give you a better view out when you're driving around town so you can spot pedestrians like that old gentleman over there and cyclists, of which there are none about, thankfully. No offence, I'm a cyclist, okay? Before you'll go crazy in the comments. Does it help? Well, sort of, but you're not really that high. And this car has the same problem as my GR Yaris, and it's the fact that you've got this big rear view mirror, which gives you a good view out the back, but this pod with all the safety tech and cameras for the anti-crash stuff, kind of means that the view through there isn't that great. They've apparently angled this pillar to reduce the blind spot, but it's still very fat. So there's still a blind spot there. What I can't fault though is a turning circle, 9.4 meters. So look, this is tight, but I can go round in one. I mean, it's really good. This is really, really, really impressive. And the steering itself is nice and light. That's good. The controls, the clutch, nice and light. The gearbox is precise, but it's actually very, very notchy. So when you're going from third into second, like now, it takes a bit of force to get into gear. Same again, when you go from third into fourth, it's a little bit notchy. Brakes though, not gonna fault them. Very smooth, progressive, not grabby at all. I like that. And the suspension, it's quite firm firmer than you'd imagine. So you do feel the bumps a little bit, but it seems to smooth them off. So it's not really intrusive actually. And even when you're going on a uneven surfaces, it doesn't get too out of shape. Bit firmer than I expected, but not really bad. Anyway, let's get out of town. Let's see what this little Yaris Cross is like at faster speed. So I'm gonna shut the roof. Come on. And next, I'm gonna see what it's like at getting up to speed from 40 to 70 miles an hour. Come on, roof. Don't press the button properly. Right, here we go, I need to overtake. Nothing's happening when I just floor it in fifth. Fourth, not much is happening. Go to third, here we go. <laughs> Finally, come on car, get to 70. Give it all the help I can. My foot is flat to the floor. Here comes 70. Oh, and the lane departure warning went mad because I just crossed the white line. Shut up. Let's turn that off, press and hold that button. 
Oh, now I've dropped speed. I need to change down again to get back up to speed. It's too busy concentrating on turning the late departure warning system off. No, there we go, we're at speed. 70. Not much tire noise, but quite a bit of noise from this pillar here. Just a bit of wind noise whistling in my ear. But other than that, it's not terrible in terms of the noise for such a small car. You know, it's not got that much sound insulation. They never have when they're small cars like this. And it feels reasonably comfy in terms of the seats and sufficiently planted. It's just the engine's performance is <sighs> it's lackluster. Finally then, we come to a twisty country road. What is the Igo X like? No, Igo Cross? Like, when you're chucking it some bends? It's actually all right. It seems to grip well, goes exactly where you point it, and doesn't lean that much at all. That's the benefit of that slightly firm suspension. And I think it's worth it because it makes it just feel a little bit more planted and confidence inspiring. Should you want to go quicker down a country road, though you're always gonna be held back by the wheezy engine. You're never gonna be going that quick. But yeah, it's all right. Look, at the corner. Grips and goes round. I thought it would push on then, but it didn't. The front wheels just tug in. That's pretty good considering how slippy the road is. Is it fun? Kind of, a little bit. You know, it's always a bit of a laugh. Thrashing a small car about within an inch of its life. But is it as much fun as a Suzuki Swift? Not quite, that's a bit more darty. A little bit more of a laugh. Now, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. One last thing to do with this car. Oh, other than this, look, I want to show you this. So you don't think I'm a complete idiot. So, while well, you can open the roof, with one touch. When you go to close it, press it once, close it halfway. So you have to press it again, and then it's not one touch. Look, now it's, you have to keep your finger on it. What is that about? Anyway, let's launch this little thing. Toyota says the iGo Cross will do 0 to 60 in 14.9 seconds. But is it really that bad? I'm gonna find out using my specialist timing gear here. I'm actually starting from a different location, a bit further back up the road to make sure I don't run out of space before I hit 60 miles an hour. But here we go, three, two, one. Oh, good start, Watson. Good gear change as well. Come on. Free let the gear. Oh, wicked change. Come on, car. <laughs> what a result. Toyota was lying. It did 0 to 60 in an amazing 14.3 seconds. 0.67 second quicker than they claimed. Still bloody slow. In fact, if you want a small city car with a bit more oomph, get a 1.2 litre version of the Hyundai i10. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Hyundai i10, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. Then change down the gear to get up this hill. You'll be doing that a lot in this car. So then, what's my final verdict on the Toyota Igo Cross? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider the iGo Cross. Its engine is a bit weak and it's not practical even by small car standards, but it's still got quite a lot of appeal. Anyway, what do you think of my verdict? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you want to watch some more reviews, click on those windows there. And if you're changing your car and you want to do it the easy way, click on that box there to go to CarWow. You can buy your new car through us and sell your old car through us. Simple.